hard time figuring out what... Hey guys, my name is Avery Bishop. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I'm the founder and host of Get Sex. Today, we're going to talk about a very timely topic. Consent, consent, consent. All politics aside, we all know that rape is bad, consent is good. Sexual assault is bad, consent is good. Sexual harassment is bad, consent good. So today, hopefully this video will help figure out what consent is. Oop, I wanna figure it out. I wanna know what consent is. So why the f is everyone having such a difficult time figuring out what consent is? Well, maybe people weren't explicitly taught by their parents or by their schools through a health class or sexual education program. So today, I've taken the matter into my own hands and we're going to answer the most common questions about consent on the internet. And hopefully, we can figure out what consent is and how we can do to ensure that we have consent. So these questions come from Lauren Larson's article on GQ entitled Your Gnarliest Questions About Consent Answered. First question. If I'm at a bar flirting, bar, brar, if I mean a brar, if I'm at a bar flirting, how do I know where the line is between playing hard to get and leave me alone? Now that is a very valid question. If he or she or they is not explicitly reciprocating your attention, then leave them the f alone and walk away. And in the end, if this person really wants to go home with you and hook up, they will let you know. However, if you know from the get-go and from the beginning that they're not really vibing with you, then leave them alone. Second question. What kind of consent am I given when a girl agrees to come back to my place? That's a good question. Well, she only agreed to going back to your place. This does not entitle you to anything other than her walking through your front door. And now you have the responsibility to continuously ask if she still wants to be there because she can change her mind or he or they. Third question. Is making out a sign of consent? It's a good question. If you're making out, you've consented to making out, but you have not consented to anything else. What is the most attractive, least awkward way for someone to ask for or give consent? Verbal consent doesn't have to be super awkward and weird and unromantic, nor does it have to kill the mood or vibe. You can just straight out ask for it and make it sound sexy if you really wanted it to. I mean, you can ask, can I touch you there? You know, it doesn't have to be weird and strange and awkward. You just have to ask for it. And hopefully the other person will be more than willing to have an open dialogue with you. It doesn't have to be long, but it does have to be continuous. Don't just ask once at the beginning and assume that you can continue with whatever you're doing for the next two hours. Check in with your partner every once in a while to make sure that they're still on the same boat as you. Fifth question. I've read that men are supposed to get consent at each stage of a sexual encounter, but what are the stages of sexual encounter? That is a good question. I actually have no idea what the sex in stage encounters are. Does that mean like bases? This is a really good question. So I'm going to let Lauren Larson do the talking. She says, if you're checking in with your partner each time you round one of the bases, you're already miles ahead of everyone else. That makes sense. So if you show attentiveness before, during, and after your sexual encounter, then you've done a good job. Fifth question. What responsibility do men have to talk about consent with our guy friends, especially those with problematic views? Yes, so it is so imperative that men, men, and Lauren Larson does a great job of saying that consent is like recycling, right? So everyone knows the rules, but not everyone 
with cycles, even though we know how to do it. So it's important that men have open dialogue with other men who are their friends to discuss consent and hold each other accountable. And I'm, yes, pointing to you men because you are afforded a position of power and privilege. So it is your responsibility to make sure that consent is always in the conversation. If you're at the bar and you have a male friend who wants to hook up with a girl, just quickly say, hey man, just don't forget to ask and make sure that this is what she wants. Sixth question, how do you draw the line between harassment and harmless but unwanted advances? There is none. There is no line. Good question. I'm in a committed relationship and it feels like asking for consent every time we have sex is overkill. Is that wrong? Absolutely not. I've been in a committed relationship with my partner for two and a half years and he always makes sure, and I also make sure, it's, it's a mutual, it's a two-way street. If I want to have sex, I make sure that that's what he wants. If he wants sex, he comes up to me, he's like, yo, man, it's been a long day. You want to, mm, mm, mm. and I'm like, yeah, and so we do it, right? And, you know, sometimes it's, you want to get the job done, right? You, you want it to be quick and easy and simple. So he makes it quick, easy and simple and just straight up asks, hey, you want to Great. I appreciate that of him. You go. You know who I'm talking to. So those were seven common questions about consent. It is important that we start having conversations about consent at a very young age, not at 14, 15, or 16 years old. No, I, I'm talking like four, five, or six years old. And it doesn't need to be about sex. No, I hope it's not about sex. What it does need to be about is letting the children know, letting them know at a very young age when they're learning to communicate that they are the ones who will make decisions about their bodies for themselves. That's it for this video. My name is Avery and you have just been sexed.